Good evening. Welcome to Night Prayer. Um, you may have been expecting Dave. I'm not sure who you're expecting, but um, Dave unfortunately is busy working, so um, he's asked me to take over for tonight. So it's good to be able to share tonight at the end of this week and uh, at the end of this day. Um, it's been quite an eventful day here in um, Horton Um You may have seen on the um, web page, website, uh, St Andrew's web page and also in WhatsApp that um, we had Bomb Squad out today. So quite an eventful day. But um, thankfully I can report that there is um, no damage to anybody or to any buildings and um, all is restored to normality. Uh, but uh, tonight for, for we're going to be using the daily prayer from um, the Church of England. You can either get this on the Church of England website or you can down, download the app on your phone or iPad or tablet, whatever you're using. Um, and most of it is fairly straightforward and I'll be leading you through that as we go through tonight. Uh, the readings for tonight are, uh, we're looking at Psalm 17 verses 1 to 8. And uh, we're also looking at uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 12 to 20, verses 12 to 20, and Luke 8, verses 1 to 3. So I'll be guiding us through that. But yeah, we're using the, the order for night prayer from the Church of England. So um, if you're sitting comfortably, we, we shall begin. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, and we say together, who made heaven and earth. As we come to the end of this day, it is quite uh, right and appropriate, and also it's um, cathartic to think about today, to reflect on those things that we've done, the things that have been good or things that perhaps haven't been so good, the things that have gone well, the things that have been a challenge, perhaps the mistakes we've made, as well as the things that we are really proud of. Let's bring those to God. And if there's things that we need to put by it with him, we're going to say some words of a confession in a moment, just so we can be in right relationship with him and with others. So we say together, Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and to one another, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. Remember that God's Word says, and Jesus um, illustrated this in the words, uh, the, the parable of the uh, prodigal son, when we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So receive now tonight God's pardon and forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. And because of that we can say, O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. And the Gloria. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So if you'd like to turn to Psalm 17, either on your in your Bible, or on your phone, or tablet, or computer, and we're good, going to read the first eight verses of that psalm. I'm not sure why they stopped at verse 8, but um, that's what they say here, so we'll just read those first eight verses. This is called A Prayer of David. If you want to join in with me, do please do so. I'm reading for the New International Version. Hear me, Lord, my plea is just. Listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from you. Let my eyes see what is right. Though you probe my heart, though you examine me at night and test me, you will find that I have planned no evil. My mouth has not transgressed. Though people try to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent, though what your lips have through what your lips have commanded. My steps have held to your paths, my feet have not stumbled. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love, you who save 
by your right hand those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. And we join in with the words of the Gloria. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Isn't it the, the words of David saying that he was reminding God and I guess also reminding himself that he sought to live a life that was following God of, of being pure and um, in walking his ways and that prayer at the end keep me as the apple of your eye hide me in the shadow of your wings there's no better place to be than in God's sight and also protected by his wonderful love we're going to turn now to our epistle reading from 1 Corinthians 15 1 Corinthians 15 and we're reading verses 12 to 20 and this is a reading that's um, all about uh, Paul I suppose not arguing but debating the the um, significance of the resurrection and it's one of those key passages um, that um, reminds us of the wonder of what Jesus has done for us what his death and resurrection has 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 has, has done and also how important it is for our faith so Paul says this when writing to the Corinthians he was arguing for people who were begin, beginning to doubt whether there was a physical resurrection and he's saying how important this is so he says but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead how can you some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead if there is no resurrection of the dead then not even Christ has been raised and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But if he did not raise him from the raise him if it but if he did not raise him, if in fact the dead are not raised. Sorry, let me read that again. But he did not raise him, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still sinners. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. For only, if only for this life we have a hope in Christ, we are all people to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those fallen asleep. So Paul, in his usual way, is really making the point to those Christians in Corinth that the significance of the resurrection, and that's the pivotal point in 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 our Christian faith. Um, yes, other other faiths have have incredible. Um, events that they say about their their great leaders but the christianity is the only faith in which god has come to know his people in jesus and also through the death and resurrection of jesus that we are brought into right relationship with him and if there is no resurrection then actually our faith as paul says is futile it makes no sense but because we believe it is that's the 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 bedrock of why Christianity is so significant and why we can be in right relationship with God because through Jesus, through his death and resurrection, he's overcome the power of death. Amen. Let's uh, look at our gospel reading. This is Luke chapter 8, verses 1 to 9. They're very well known reading. The parable of the sower. And this is, sorry, I'm not reading one tonight, I'm reading verses 1 to 3, and it's, so it's before we get to the, the parable. This is just talking about the the um, the women and the other people who were um, accompanying Jesus. And, and, it, and it's sig significant that Luke records this. He, he, Luke is, a, is a, 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 a gospel writer who, who focuses a lot on the importance of the women that were in Jesus' life, more so than all the other gospels. And, and that, I think that's particularly in a time when, when um, in the world um, there was so much of a dominance by men 
the fact that Luke um, takes special um, a special point to record the significance of women, not just these women here, but but throughout his gospel, he he so shows how how much um, uh, God sees all people as being special and chosen. So this is uh, chapter eight of Luke and verses one to eight. Well, sorry, verses one to three. After this, Jesus travelled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons were cast out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, a manager of Herod's household. Susanna and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. So it shows two things, doesn't it? Firstly, that Luke chose to recognise the importance of, of all people, male and female, young and old, of different backgrounds um, in his life and ministry. But also it shows, shows that these women were people of means. They were supporting Jesus. They were, they were providing for him um, through their means. Um, and, and that again is something which, which you don't hear much about in other gospels and certainly in other writings at that time. So uh, a very special little a few verses that reminds us that all are special to God, male and female, slave and free. We are all loved and chosen by him. Let's turn now to, to prayer. A special prayer for this week. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us the new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I want to pray particularly tonight for the person who um, laid that device outside the church today, um, even though it was a hoax. Um, there's obviously somebody who is a little bit disturbed. Um, there have been previous incidents. Um, we don't know who it is, but um, let's pray for him or her, whoever it is. Father God, we, we thank you that we have this ability to meet with you tonight and we pray for the person who who placed this um, hoax device um, by the door of the church. Pray Lord for him or her that you would come and give peace to their spirits, to their mind. Lord, if they have an axe to grind or a hatred towards the church we pray Lord that you would help that to be healed and Lord if um, there can be a, a resolution to what's going on in their minds we pray Lord that that would be bring about a good result we thank you Lord for the police and the bomb squad who came out to deal with it thank you Lord for them putting their lives potentially on the line they didn't know what that device was Thank you, Lord, that uh, they were all kept safe. Thank you, Lord, also that the church building wasn't damaged in any way. So, Father, we, we live in a world with uh, many different people. It's very difficult to know who's normal because there's such a breadth of normality um, across our, our society. But, Lord, thank you that whether we consider ourselves normal and others as not so normal, in good health or not in good health we thank you that you love us the same we pray for all those people now tonight who are feeling unloved and unaccepted and feel they don't fit into society and lord if we as a church can in any way give them a sense of self-worth if we can help them to meet with you the the god who loves and accepts them if we can help to introduce them to jesus we pray that we would do that And we ask, this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray also for this weekend as we prepare for worship. Father, we thank you that uh, we can both worship in church in limited number, but also online. Pray for those who will be taking part in, in, in both acts of worship. 
and not just in this church but across our nation across the world father we pray that you would enable us to to um, continue to worship you and particularly in this part of of the northeast even though there aren't extra measures being taken here in Darlington or Teesside. We pray for other parts of the northeast, many parts of County Durham and Newcastle and Northumberland, as well as parts of the northwest and North Yorkshire that are going into a sort of a temporary sort of a lockdown, as well as for the threat of um, a short-term lockdown to try to curb the the increased rate of the virus spreading. Again, Father, we pray for the wisdom of those people who make these decisions. We pray also for the skill of the medical profession and scientists who are looking for able to looking to be able to help people through this time, but also to find a cure, a, a vaccine. We pray for other parts of the world as well where there's um, an even worse situation to ours. But above all, Father, we pray that you would um, bring about good out of this very difficult situation. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's draw our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer, which we'll say in its traditional form. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we're just going to use the conclusion from the night prayer. If you have that in front of you, you'd like to join in with the bold type in the, where it says all. In peace we will lie down and sleep. And we say together, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks to the morning, so do we look to you, O Christ. Come to the dawning of the day and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. I see that's in brackets, we probably shouldn't have said that. And we say together, O Lord, bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful evening, uh, whatever you're doing, whether it is um, with other people, probably limited because of not being able to have more than six people, um, but also um, if it is uh, on your own that you're feeling the presence of Jesus in your life tonight. So bless you all and hope to see you again soon. If you can join us tomorrow night, it'll be at 7 o'clock also for night prayer and then again uh, on Sunday evening. But also uh, don't forget that we have a morning service at 10 a.m. Uh, through Facebook and YouTube. Every blessing to you all. Good night.